Hillary trying to be, you know, relevant with the kids. It hey. is very sustainable with the fam bay, yo. Oh, is this God. book under nonfiction or lit? It's lit, fam. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Talking Shit. My name is Barrett Courtney. I'm one of your hosts, and here, joined with me, are my fantastic co-hosts and even better friends, the bisexist from Texas, Henry Montiero. You got way too much attitude. And over here is my favorite chunky punk, Ricky Balazan. I would say it's very sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what Talking Shit is, it's a weekly podcast where the three of us bring in random topics of discussion. We talk some shit about those topics. If you think that's lit, fam. <laughs> oh, sustainable <laughs> if you think that's sustainable bay you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash bgg and get every full episode of talking shit early if you support us over there and uh before all of the topics are released on youtube.com slash bay zone gamers uh monday through thursday and even before the full episode is up for everybody over on our soundcloud page on friday so there you go go to patreon get the episodes early and get a, an exclusive episode every month should probably record that exclusive episode soon for March. Yeah. Or like next week. Probably. Yeah. How how's your guys' week been? Busy. Busy? Yeah. Uh, busy. I can't remember anything that happened. <laughs> <laughs> he was just fucking high the whole time. <laughs> wow. Uh, um, just, just taking roofies. <laughs> forgetting, <what? laughs> forgetting that he's taking roofies, so he's taking more roofies. <laughs> it's called the Job effect. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't you mean the yeah. Gob effect? <laughs> yeah, my week, my week has consisted of two things, and it's been like job hunting. Mm. And if I'm not job hunting, I'm playing Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon. <laughs> it's, like, it's the only two things. On. You know, like a man. Like a uh, man. Speaking of Pokemon, uh, because of the 20th anniversary, I've been watching the Pokemon uh, Indigo show. League. Uh, well, I finished Indigo like I finished Indigo League last year when it was on Netflix before they took it down. So mm-hmm. I actually started from uh, the Orange Islands. Oh, nice. so I'm, I'm going through oh, like the basically like, forget. Yeah, yeah, I'm going basically through season two, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna watch like up until X Y or whatever, but I'll probably do up until season three where the third movie is because that's like I think that's where I stopped watching as a kid. So that's really all I want to watch it for is that nostalgia factor. I yeah, say. I, I'd say g- keep going until Ruby and Sapphire and then stop before Diamond and Pearl. You yes. know when to stop when you hear that rap. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I started watching Indigo League a couple weeks ago, and then I got through, I think, like a good 20 episodes. And then, and then I you watched... realize there's 100 episodes in that first season, and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. And <laughs> Let's then take I, a bet. I started watching the, the um, first two movies and then i stopped mm, mm. let's take a bet which of our friends can most likely do the entire pokemon rap from memory because there's 150 <laughs> or more to, to see. see to be a pokemon master is my destiny my favorite part is always just when there's that one part where they can't rhyme a pokemon for another one so they just yell pokemon <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um uh yeah my my week has been me just falling down into a hole of despair. And that's what it feels like. Self, <laughs> self-loathing. Yeah. Now um, that's what I call Christmas. And we'll get to that. Well, I'm going to save that, to, that topic. That's going <laughs> to that, be its actual, that's going to be its own topic. That lovely conversation. Um, but before we get there, Ricky, what do you want to talk about this week? So we play game. We play game. We play good game. I play other game. And we play bad game. No, that, that game <laughs> you, bad. That game bad. Board game? We don't talk about that game. <laughs> um... But I really like again me over the week trying to come up with a topic, um, like every week, like every week, um, <laughs> to the point where I have to like keep asking you, "Hey, do you have a topic for this week?" You just have to reach your hands right under and just go like, "Yeah, this I just got to tickle his, uh, tickle you know, his and then girth. It just comes out." Yeah, cough. Um, <laughs> I realized that we never really talked about uh, video game bosses mm, or any mm. type of really final battle. Um, or wanted to talk about which are the hardest. I figured. Henry, out of all of us, would understand. Yeah. Why? Like, hard boss battles. I don't know, you play some pretty hard fucking games yeah. that I wouldn't fucking like, play. I, I really think you you doubt yourself as a gamer because you're like, oh, I only play, like, easy games or whatever. But you you can actually get through, you, like, a You a dabble lot of, like, in some hard shit. Yeah. Um, so I wanted you us mean to... mean, like, meth? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So I don't know. I wanted us to think of our favorite bosses, the hardest bosses, mm. and ones that we just plain fucking hated. Not even like appreciated as an enemy, <laughs> just that we're straight Roll, up we stupid. Can't. Roll, we can't mention the Arkham Asylum Joker boss no, battle because we, we talk about it too much. We, we yeah. talk about it all the fucking time. Uh, but it's not, two boss fights in that universe that I actually do really, really appreciate is Deathstroke. Or no, three, I think. Deathstroke from Arkham Origins. That was actually like a very unique sort of um, the one hand -on -one. to hand. It was one of the very few boss battles where you're constantly doing hand to hand yeah, like combat stay on your instead of like, the whole time. Instead of like waiting for the people to charge at you. And then, like, yeah, yeah, throw the battering at them, and then you stun them and whatnot. It randomized the pattern for the Deathstroke one too, because I remember like there, like it had a it had a formula to it, but they would switch it up every once in a yeah. while. Whereas the other Arkham bosses, for the most part, were that same formula of waiting yeah. a little bit. Um, and one that I feel is very underappreciated because I think it's possibly the most unique, even more unique than a. Uh, Mr. Freeze is a crocodile sort of boss fight in Arkham Asylum. Oh, where you're because, like because it's not you're not really that. actually fighting him, but it is a sort of like I, I've done a let's play of I've done a playthrough of Arkham Asylum, which you guys can check out. But uh, and during that time, um, you know, it's all about sound and like listening to like where he's gonna be and all of that. And it's the hardest, one of the hardest boss fights to do when you're doing a Let's Play, because the way we record, we can't listen to. Yeah. And that is actually the only time, because I, you know, for Let's Plays, I always have it set to subtitles, so I can like uh, sort of understand what's going on in the story so I can talk about it with people. Right. But that is the only time in that entire game where it actually doesn't show subtitles, because Croc will talk whenever he's about to come up. And but they don't show his subtitles. Mm. And so it's like the fucking scariest thing. And I actually like that better. And, um, and, and, and also Mr. Freeze, uh, because, uh, he's sort of like the equivalent to Deathstroke. His Deathstroke was all about hand to hand combat, but Mr. Freeze was sort of taking the, um, predator mode and turning that into a boss like format. And I, yeah. uh, that was, that was a really smart, both of those boss fights were really smart. Mr. Freeze is like the Batman Arkham equivalent of that boss fight in donkey kong 64 where you have to use all of them because you have to use like everything that you've learned through city to uh, fight. oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. True. Uh, well um like the very last yeah. boss i'm glad you brought up donkey kong 64 because the the last one <laughs> but the oh last, you uh, don't say but the last oh. one is very smart and you know what like alex o'neill gives me a bunch of shit because donkey kong 64 is one of my favorite games of all time but oh we give what? you shit for it. It, it everybody gives me fucking shit for it but anyway the what are you what are you wearing? Uh sure, I, I can't sure my dad I, got me in Norway. Oh, uh, okay. Is that like obviously a different... <laughs> I was like, what language is this? But anyway, um Donkey Kong 64, that last boss fight where you're in like a boxing match with uh K Rule. Right. And you are like learn like everything they've taught you in the game, you bring back in the into that last boss fight. And it's so smart the way you do that. Now, does it control like weird in some places or you know, it's just some weird camera angles, and that's just a like that's a just sign N64. of sixty four. Yeah, yeah, that's just N sixty four and you know, even you know, bad camera angles and whatnot. The only game lasted up until PlayStation 3 when I was recently playing through Uncharted, and I was like, oh my god, some of these camera angles that they force are fucking awful. Let's be honest, the only good camera angles in Nintendo 64 are the Legend of Zelda games. Oh, yeah. Because they, they, they knew how to, because right. you could Definitely. control where you're looking and looking at enemies, and you can Mario contort, was contort that into uh, yeah. your advantage. But that boss fight is really good, but the other boss fight that's actually really smart in Donkey Kong 64 is, like, the fake K. Rool boss fight, where you're at K. Rool's castle, and it's not actually K. Rool, so you're in... The arena is, like, a just a square arena, and you're uh, on a little platform, and there's water surrounding you, and there's cutouts of K. Rool on each side, and um, it's, like, the, the K. Rool cronies that are holding up, like, these... Uh, cardboard cutouts like it's such a silly boss fight but it's also really smart in the way of like you like the arena is so big that you can't really immediately look up to see where he is because it starts out as like there's only one k rule that goes up at a time and that's the one that you have to hit but later on it turns into there's two at a time and the one that has the light on it is the one that you have to hit but you can't really like you gotta sort of really get a feeling of where it is you have to try to notice the light as best as you can or right. try to try to hear like where it's coming from 
because uh, I remember I played that um, in Hawaii last, not two summer summers ago, I think at this point. Makes it sound and... like the only N64 is in Hawaii and like you have to go there to play. <laughs> and it's in like an ancient temple. It's attached to like a flat screen. <laughs> and the, the thing that was uh, weird about it was uh, it, like the video worked fine of plugging it into the TV, but the audio didn't work. So the whole time mm. I'm playing through that game, I'm like, oh yeah, 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 this is fine. Until I got to that boss fight, I was like, Oh shit! This is like a new challenge. I was actually able to beat that. That's awesome. And um, yeah, and um, you know, some one of the most frustrating boss fights. Uh, two, I just want to name before you know, I, I let you guys talk because I know you know I I like to take your conversations and you know pull my own way. You towards you know how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two that are really frustrating. One is not because it's ridiculously hard or or no three. One that's not ridiculously hard, it's just fucking annoying, is Deadpool's final boss fight. In, uh, where you I have was going to mention You have that. to beat Sinistro, <laughs> like, fucking 46 times. And it's like, yeah. all right. I, I get what you guys are trying to do here, but, like, make it, like, 12 times or, like, 15 uh, times. You know, a but reasonable like 40 number. 40 times, it's like, Jesus Christ, guys. I remember the first time we went... <sighs> Fuck, I'm tired. Um, the first time we went through... Um, that game and sitting there and all of us just like screaming because of how frustrated we were. It took us like an hour to beat that yeah. boss. It was fucking. We ridiculous. went through that whole game <laughs> just watching it. You play it. I still never yeah. played it or seen um, it. It's it, beautiful, but it's ridiculous. Well, not beautiful graphic wise. It's um, beautiful because Deadpool. Just the, they they get the humor and they yeah. the humor translates well. So I don't know if it's worth it for you because you're not a huge Deadpool fan. I might pick it up if I see it for like five dollars. Like a game it, if yeah. you. Come over to my house. I have it. So keep yeah. searching on me, but if you really want to like own it, because I'll probably um, have it there. So yeah. Oh god. At I, least the PS3. Version. I drank a lot of coffee this morning, so I'm getting all gassy and some burpy mm. and whatnot. Burp the baby. So, so the other two that really frustrate me, and I talk about this a little bit in the let's plays that I'm doing right now, is Uncharted 2's final boss fight. Yeah. Which is, I think, one of the most like panic anxiety inducing boss fights ever it is such horseshit because you know they they reteach you the mechanics and you're you're learning things throughout uncharted 2 and like it's skills that you have to use throughout that whole game and that final boss fight is like remember all of those skills that you learned throughout this game well throw it out the window you're just yeah, gonna you're, run in a circle and you're just gonna boss. run in a circle and panic while this fucking <laughs> Beefed up Russian dude is charging at you. Sounds like Sunday. <laughs> Throwing fucking grenades and shit while you're just panically trying to shoot these blue things that'll hopefully explode when he's close enough and whatnot. It's just such like it doesn't make and there's no skill to that. And it's so like I, I'm nervous to play through that again for the playthroughs that I'm doing for Uncharted right now because it's just. It brings me to a new level of anxiety that, like, I never really feel before, and or I've never really felt before. Like sorry. Colin levels. Colin, I I don't want to speak for Colin Moore because I don't know him personally, so I don't know like yeah. what his sort of level of anxiety is. But because um, you know, I'm already like my anxiety has grown a lot in like the last oh, yeah, year. I know but how you feel. but those fucking boss fight, that, that boss fight, and then here's the other one. It's fucking Arkham Knights. Cloudburst tank battle, which is oh. also, and I didn't learn this until like one of the last times I played through it is, but they don't tell you this. Like, of all the fucking hand holding they do throughout that game, of all the fucking every 10 minutes of reminding you how to fucking glide in that game, they don't tell you in this boss fight. So, like, every time you hit a side of the, the cloudburst, he starts chasing you, and you think. This off of instinct, like, okay, I got to reach a certain distance and then he'll stop like following me. But that's not it. You see, like, they don't tell you this is that there's a little bar at the top of the screen. And when that bar runs out, that's when he stops chasing you. So the first few times I played through that game, I'm like, why am I not getting far enough? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's so. Ah, uh, it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's it was so bad. It was so such a bad, bad ending for the series. Um. I, like, story-wise, I actually think the story is pretty smart, except for the whole, like, hey, I'm Red Hood now, and I, I saved you, and but we're not going we're, we're to have, like, a moment of closure or anything. We just, just went gonna... through all this for nothing. Bye. Yeah. I'll see you later. Yeah, and yeah, it's like... I'm Jason Todd. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jason Todd. Yeah, so, spoilers for Arkham Knight, but really, who gives a shit anymore? Um... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, it, it just those are all great candidates for this thing, especially the last. All right, one. you guys start talking now because so, I, I think I've yeah. had my word. I, can, I, I have one more, but I'll save it for later. There's two <laughs> games that I think of when it comes to great boss fights because, like, all of them I think are great. Right, mm. Shadow of the Colossus, which is pretty much entirely bo- boss fights, yeah, mm. and are all great. Yeah, and Shovel Knight. Because Shovel Knight's boss fights are just, like, really fun. Yeah, and it's also, like, very emotionally resonant as well of, you know, um, realizing <laughs> that your enemy is Shield Knight. That was and, and, like... He hasn't played it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's fine. <laughs> oh, damn it. He, he hasn't played it. <laughs> Yeah, you won't remember it yeah, by the time you play. It's one of it's one of those things though, like even if you do know it, for me it was a little obvious at the beginning because it's such like a played out, very like That's funny. It's an NES I've, story. I've it's, just, an, it's an NES story, so you're yeah. gonna get it at one point. But it's still like just how they it's sort of like how I feel about Arkham Knight, where it's like, okay, it's obvious like Jason Todd is Arkham yeah. Knight, but it's just like the way they do it, the way they tell it still makes it cool. It's like the ending of Breaking Bad. It's like obvious where they're going to go with it. I won't spoil anything because I know he hasn't seen well, it Well, I know what happens. You, he knows what happens, but also like it's obvious where they're going to go with Breaking Bad. But yeah. just the fact that they're doing it and just how they tell it is still very emotionally like resonant. So even though I ruined that ending for you, <laughs> I think when you experience and the dialogue that happens right. throughout that ending, and there's still oh, like no, another I'm, twist. I'm, I'm that like happens. still going to buy it. Yeah, far. there's still another twist that happens with another character. In Breaking Bad? No. In, uh, <laughs> in Shovel Knight. That's, that still comes off as like, oh, fuck. Like, that's really cool. So I'm so sorry about no, that. That's fine. Uh, um, but, it's funny, though, because I, I just played like the first two stages of it. So like... I just understand the story with Shovel Knight, with uh, mm-hmm. Shield Knight, so that's just really funny. But yeah, go on, Shovel Knight and um, Shadows, Shadows of the Colossus. Colossus. Yeah, those are both like great boss fights, right? Because they're always fun. You're always thinking about like, okay, here's what I need to do. It's more of Shadow of the Colossus because with Shovel Knight, it's like hit him, just dodge the attacks. I love the the way they do it in Shadow of the Colossus because, like you said, it's the whole fucking game. So you're really just like building your approach to it and kind of enjoying the storyline more because of it. Cause you kind of yeah. understand the formula for beating the bosses and they kind of get harder as they go like the slightest bit. So you're still enjoying the gameplay, but for the most part, it's just more like, Holy shit, I'm on top of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there are like any other like boss fights where I'm like, this was really great. I love this part. Uh, one of the most aggravating boss fights for me recently I beat Infamous Second Son. Right. Because mm. I was like, I've had this. I should just probably play it at some point. Like how eventually I'll just fit play Far Cry 4 or in Watch Dogs because I have them. Right. So I should just play them eventually. But yeah, Watch Dogs, you can play for an hour. And then you're like, all right, whatever. I, I really just want to see I played Watch it for Dogs. an hour and I was like, all, all right. right. But uh, the part in Infamous Second Son, the first time you fight Augustine... Like, directly right. after your brother dies. Yeah. I hated that fight, like, I, so much. I hate that entire game. I hate every boss and fight in an infamous like, game, oh, period. Like, don't say it's like, oh, you didn't really play. You don't understand fucking infamous and whatnot. I played that entire fucking game. I cleared every fucking... I cleared the map. I played the fuck out of that game. Yeah, I did, too. It's not I, a great game. I've played infamous the, one and two I, I think great. it's funny. There's two people. There's two people. When the PS4 for, sort of first came out and Infamous Second Son was still new... Um, the the uh, you know moving your controller to like spray paint and like shaking it. Oh, this is the future of gaming. Yeah, there's two people that we know that were like, "Wow, this is like really like the true next gen experience." <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about because <laughs> I was there for that. And I was like thinking about it. And I was like, I really don't understand like how that could be. And like, but I didn't want to say anything because I hadn't experienced it yet. And then when I did it, I was like, it's cute. But if this is what you think the next gen experience is, like, I, I, I'm, I'm really sad. <laughs> For, like, your expectations for the future of gaming. Um, like, I can only imagine anyway. how that person reacted to playing Saints Row, where you have to, like, tag over. Or in Tony Hawk's Underground, when you have to tag over shit. Or, they or must have been like, in the Whoa! future. <laughs> this is crazy! Oh. like, Nintendo 64 kid reaction. <laughs> oh, my God! I love that game. <laughs> so much. Um, 
You got any like super memorable ones while I try to think of some more? Well, of course, like the first boss fight that comes to my head is fighting Gary and Bully. Oh my <laughs> god! It's like it's not really like a crazy like. It's not hard. What's it? That, yeah. The entire game isn't hard, but it's just it, like it's just like satisfying. But also the dialogue that goes through that uh, boss fight of him re- revealing his plan and like showing how fucking crazy he is, and then the satisfaction when you fucking punch him unrealistically through all of these fucking floorboards <laughs> into the fucking Cook glass. Combo burger. <laughs> into the in, through the glass <laughs> and like into the principal's office and neither of you died somehow. Um, like we could have gotten Russell to snap his neck earlier. <laughs> but then also the satisfaction of like the, the principal like realizing like what Gary had been up to and you're just like, yes! You just pretty much murdered this kid! You're amazing! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir! Let oh, me I, kick him while a... he's on the ground! <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of a great boss fight that you're gonna fight me on it being a boss fight, but... When you play Freebird and Guitar Hero 2. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that so I was counts. actually, I was thinking about this this morning of uh, Guitar Hero specifically. And uh, Lou, Lou from Guitar Hero 3. When you play The Devil Went Down to Georgia, the guitar remix. <sighs> yes. And how long it took me to fucking beat that. Because, you know, I'm a kid. Like, I oh, can't, like, it takes I me. remember being at Jackson, you still playing over it, and it's well, still no, frustrating see, that, you. That, that only took me a couple hours. Oh, did it? I thought it was, like, the next morning. No, <laughs> it was, like, no, like, I took a break from it for, like, an hour, and then later that night I went back to oh, it and I beat it. that's right. I remember. But when I originally had that game in, like, middle school or whatever, it took me, like, a week to Jesus fucking beat Christ. him. Uh, and I remember, like, beating him... I, I was so obsessed with this game that I convinced my mom to let me bring my PS2 over to my grandparents' house. Because, like, all I fucking do is, like, go on the computer there anyway. <laughs> while they I'm watch. battling Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was oh, upstairs playing you. it. I was upstairs playing it, and that's when I beat him. I was at my grandparents' house. I was like, yes! And he started screaming. And yes! Hurt. And my grandparents are just, like, questioning, like, why I play video games. And then, like, even to this day where I'm like, hey, I want to get into video game covers. And then they're questioning, like, why... Why <laughs> your grandma's just like, did you defeat Satan? <laughs> That's a good Danny. Um, Another and going off that same thing, playing Painkiller and Rock Band too. Oh, mm. in general, <laughs> <laughs> just, on every just, instrument, <laughs> just playing Painkiller. Um, in something that I'm surprised you have not uh, said yet, and uh, something that's very resonant with me and sort of like two boss fights put into one is uh, Flowey from um, Yes from Undertale. That's a great. Oh, oh do you and go back to Flowey? So, yeah, that, Him? <laughs> yeah, so I don't want to ruin anything for you because, like, okay. I'm probably going to go over your save because I really want to go back to Undertale just because it's so fucking amazing. But I really want Goat Mom's music to be playing in the background. <laughs> as you say this. But here's the thing, like, you got it. You got to play through that game twice. OK, that's the thing is like yeah. the first time. Right, that, I mean, that's the whole point of the game is the. Yeah. The and uh, you really don't realize that until you go through it the second time and uh, try to do true pacifist and all that. It's funny um, when Undertale has more replayability than uh, Until Dawn. <laughs> 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 it shows a lot. Um, but just like the first, even just the first time, just playing through it the first time. When you first and meet him. How fucking crazy. Just like. See his transformation into that huge, ginormous fucking monster? Oh, yeah. That is one of the creepiest looking bosses I have ever seen in my so, entire fucking life. It's like life. Gygas Earthbound level. Oh, Ooh. my. It's so fucking great. I um, love Gygas, too. He's a great boss. Fan. Yeah. Um. Is this the same guy you, you first meet when you go there? At and the very been, beginning. And he's like, and Flowey. That Flowey dude, the flower. So I had a nightmare about him the day after I played it. Well, because he has that creepy face where he's like, it's killed or be killed. Like, it was, <laughs> it was fun. That oh, dude creeps me the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, you fucking wait, dude. That All dude, the boss fights in wait. that game are pretty great. Like, Papyrus is a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, papaya. Like when you, I love papaya. I, did, I, I just play I love papaya. <laughs> I just like the f- I just like the fight system in that uh, game, just in general. Of it's not really about like, oh, use this kind of attack to fight this person. No, it's just like it's about using this his keyboard longer. and like avoiding these things. Like I, re- there's something really addicting about that fight system. Yeah, because it's like you're playing. It's like one of those bullet hell shoot 'em ups. That's also an RPG. And exactly, like, I love 2D shooters a lot. I wish that there were, like, more of them to play because mm. most of them are just, like, in arcades. Right. Yeah, but then also playing through Undertale again, getting to pa- a true pacifist ending and realizing... I won't try to ruin this one for you. Um, realizing the, the twist... No, 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 I won't, uh, I won't. But realizing, like, 
the twist yeah. that comes with that second ending and how fucking upsetting it is of like, I don't want to fight you. I don't want to do this. And oh. you don't even know. No, no? You, don't, you don't even, you Actually, cannot not even, even comprehend. Not even what I'm thinking? No. no. They, like you can, what, what do you think it is? What do you think the ending is? Is he like goat mom or something? <laughs> <laughs> is he like actually goat, goat mom? Goat mom did nothing wrong. <laughs> goat mom's really like this empty goat mom in a innocent. like this. Toriel, I, I, I killed the the first time I played through. Wait, you was treats Toriel innocent? Because you know what? Like she was acting shady as fuck the first time I played it. So it was like, why won't she let me try to leave this land? Like she and she wants to kill all of these people, like with no like sort of like justice about it. Like she seems a little crazy right now. So I, I, I killed Toriel the first time, and then playing through it the second time, I was like, oh. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll tell you this after, just for time. My mom did nothing wrong. Um, well, I'm trying to. Th- uh, so, yeah, we should wrap up this obviously in the next couple of minutes. So one more that I thought of, and it wasn't even because of gameplay or because of skill level or anything, because it's kind of like a telltale type of game, <clears> but, <throat> but just kind of the satisfaction of like catching him is at the end of Heavy Rain, where you're on this conveyor belt with the serial killer, like mm. the origami them. killer. Yeah, the origami I still need killer. To play that game. You have it, right? Yeah, I can let you, I'll let you borrow it since you just gave me like three games yeah. to play. Well, it's it's, it's twenty dollars on, uh, on PS4. Yeah, it's on the PS4 now. Oh really? It's remastered. Yeah, it's uh, Heavy Rain oh, and uh, okay. Beyond Two Souls. Fuck Beyond Two Souls. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, game's, that game's bullshit. But it has Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to think and of Ellen Page. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ellen yeah. DeGeneres. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was She's hosting to... the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of um like ps2 gamecube ones mm, since we mm. have so much material for those um, oh really smart boss fights and again alex o'neill would give me shit about this spongebob battle for bikini bottom so those I, fucking big robot like versions of like patrick sandy and then spongebob and then plankton at the yep. very end holy shit i was just thinking about that this oh, morning that game i is was waiting so for you good. to mention it that game is so fucking good it's like one of the best like 3d platformers like to this day that I've ever played. And that's why like I want it so badly to be a PS2 to PS4, but I know they won't do it because of license. I found it for two dollars at Amoeba. <laughs> nice. I, didn't I want buy a it. PS2. I want a PS2 so fucking bad just to be able to play that game again. Um, um you can borrow mine some someday. Yeah, yours I would is need back to from... find but I would also need to find a battle for bikini bottom. Easy to find it. Yeah. Go on Amazon. Amazon has everything. Yeah. Um and then um the one it's it's one of my favorite ones just because it was the first video game i really like bought for myself and and like played and stuff so it, like meant a little bit more but the first boss fight in metroid prime oh mm. they were the the guys in the that's like, another one you need to lend me yeah or i can just get like the compilation for we for wii u i mean that's worth it i really yeah love they metroid. had like, they had the metroid prime like trilogy and you can get it for a wii u like buy old wii games it's fucking rad yeah, I think I'll do that because I haven't played any of those. Yeah, but that one's like one of my more favorite ones just because of like the simplicity of it. And we kind of don't have it reminded me of um, the boss. Well, it's not really. A, yeah, it's a boss fight in a in a Wind Waker um, where you're kind of in like the underground cave and he's like coming out of the lava. It's that big snake thing. Mm. And he like plops onto you every once in a while. Oh, one more that I have to say before we wrap this up because we really should wrap this up. Yep. Uh, not a great boss fight, but definitely really memorable for how fucked up it is. Mm. Super Metroid Krakomire. Oh, shit. When you even... shoot him into the lava and you see him melt. Yeah. Mm. And this was like on SNES. So it was completely unexpected. And you're like, holy shit, this is fucked up. Yeah. And then like at the very end, he crashes through his skeleton and it just falls mm. apart. Mm. It's so awesome. I love so that game good. so much. Super Metroid's so good. So fucking good. I think that's it for me.